My sisters, Samantha, Sam, 28 female, and Catherine, Cat, 34 female, fake names, and I have not talked for the past decade after I learned that they were covering my estranged biological mother's affair. They were bribed with things my mother and her then affair partner bought for them for their silence during the three-year affair my mother had, and when my late dad found out, he effectively cut all of them out of his life, which I did as well. Sam and Kat tried to mend our relationships, but I've refused to have anything with them. There was some drama in terms of inheritance last year, which was when we spoke, but other than that, I don't keep up to date with their lives. It came as a surprise to me when Sam reached out to tell me she was getting married to another woman, which I really didn't know she wasn't straight. We came across each other when Sam and Kat was at the restaurant my dad used to bring us to. It was usually where he brought us for his birthday. Last Tuesday was his birthday, and my stepmom and I went for dinner there, which I guess Sam and Kat had the same idea, I suppose. I did my best to ignore them, but Sam saw me and sent a dessert I usually liked, which I rejected. She then came over to our table and asked if we can talk. Kat didn't really acknowledge me, as she has stopped seeing me as her brother, but she came over too and sat beside us. My stepmom Linda just kept quiet, as Sam made small talk, asking me about my well-being and all. But I told her to cut to the chase and tell me what does she want to talk to me about, since she is interrupting at this moment. Kat wanted to say something, but Sam just got to her point and told me she was getting married and was hoping I would walk her down the aisle. I thought she was joking, till she waited for me to respond, but it took me a moment to compose myself from laughing before saying no. I told her congratulations, but I don't see myself ever attending her wedding, much less walking her down. I told her she respects my decision to never reach out to me, as we agreed on last year, and she is not honoring her promise to do that at this moment. I guess Kat got heated and told me to stop being an a-hole, and she knew Sam asking me was stupid because, in my eyes, she knows they are basically dead to me. I told her to mind her business and just go back to her table, which she refused, till Sam told her to do the same. Kat spat out something about how she is happy she doesn't have an a-hole dad and brother in her life anymore and how our mother was right to cut me off finally. I replied in kind that she should leave, cause honestly, looking at her face alone reminds me why she was the first sister I cut off before I did with Sam. Sam asked me if I am sure that I want to keep the animosity between us siblings forever, which I shaked my head and told her that I don't have animosity for people who are strangers to me. I told her I found it pathetic that they tried reaching out to me when I have told them there will never be reconciliation between us that the moment they decided to betray dad like that, they were dead to me, something I feel like a broken record telling them why I want to have nothing to do with her. Sam just nodded and seemed like she wanted to cry, but composed herself and stood up. She wished me well and told me she and her soon-to-be wife would be moving to the state once they were married, and she was hoping that we could mend our relationship, but if I don't even acknowledge her as a sister anymore, she will stop acknowledging me as a brother. This would be the last time she will see me again. I told her coldly whether she lives or dies, it's no longer my concern. Our paths were set when she decided to do what she did for money and the lifestyle she wanted. Sam told me she regretted it and wanted to apologize so many times, but both my dad and I refused to speak to her, and the fact when he disowned her as her daughter made her realize that what she did was wrong and that she will always regret what she did to us. I told her it's a little too late and told her to live her life and focus on her marriage rather than waste our times with the past. It's done, and I really don't want to have anything with her, Kat, or our mother for the rest of our lives. She said she understood and made her exit. Sam looked like she wanted to burst into tears, which I didn't really care much for it, cause what needed to be said had to be said. Kat came back and told me to go duck myself, which I just chuckled and blew her a kiss to antagonize her even more. Linda kept quiet the whole time, but told me that this was enough and let's just finish dinner early and leave, but I told her I'm going to enjoy my tiramisu no matter what. On the ride home, Linda told me that my dad's hatred for my sister made her sad, and now she feels sad that I'm being like him, but I told her while I appreciated her concern, what I feel for them both is my business and my business alone. Now coming to think of it, I felt maybe I was too harsh. Maybe I could have rejected her offer without hurting her through my words. I know what I said is true and off my chest, but am I an a-hole really for the interactions I had with sister? Not the a-hole. You can cut whoever you like from your life, but if they were teens or younger when it happened, your mom manipulated them. 
you don't know how they felt at the time or what their own relationship with your father was. Children also aren't responsible for telling their parent the other is having an affair. Consider hearing your siblings out. You're the a-hole for holding so much anger towards what your sisters did as teenagers. They should have never been put in that position to begin with. Additionally, it's been over a decade and they're remorseful. We are not born perfect people, and if your mom is as crappy as you claim, it's not like they grew up with the best judgment to start with. They clearly have changed, and you're still holding a lot of hatred towards them. You're the a-hole because it was your mom and a fair partner who did your dad wrong. I don't understand people saying Sam and Kat did something terrible to your dad. They were not the ones having an affair. Your mom and affair partner roped them into the lie, and you think you're the big guy to keep crapping on them. Ugh. Because you let your mom and affair partner destroy your relationships. Your father took it to the grave, and I guess now you will too. Linda sees it as she did with your dad, and that's probably sad. Kat honestly sounds like she's just done with your boohoo BS. I'm 34 female and have been dating a great guy for about 8 months. He agrees to a request from his ex-wife that I think is way over the line for a normal friendship and thinks I'm overreacting and being upset. Here's the deal. I knew that he had been married previously, for 3 or 4 years, and that he and his ex-wife were on good terms and are friendly. They never had kids but shared a dog that he sees about once per month. It's been like 2 years since their divorce, and I genuinely am friends with most of my ex-boyfriends. So, I found nothing strange about him being friends with his ex-wife. In fact, I consider it a positive thing. Generally, that means that nobody involved was bat crap crazy, which seems like a good sign. Anyway, I've been with him for around 8 months and I've never had any reason not to trust him. I haven't met her but know he's told her he's dating someone. She isn't dating anyone and she and her mother still live in the house she and my boyfriend lived in while married. So, my boyfriend tells me that she's going on vacation with her mom and that he is going to go dog sit. He tells me that she asked him to stay over there. It's literally 5 minutes away. And unfortunately, it was specifically stipulated that I am not invited to the house. I have no interest in going over there, but why the duck would she even feel at liberty to specify that? And why would he agree? I was trying to understand and talk it through with him, but it was pretty irritating. I told him I'm concerned because this does not sound like a standard friendship. She seems comfortable asking things of him that are not reasonable to expect of a platonic friend, especially when someone is doing you a favor. Most importantly, it's concerning to me that he agreed so willingly to these requests. He seems to not be setting healthy boundaries. I was mad at him for a few days, but I know he loves his dog, so I was trying to get over it, until last night, when he added the cherry on top. In order to avoid traumatizing the dog, his ex has requested that he be present in the house at the moment she or her mother depart on vacation, and since their flight is very early, it's easiest if he just stays over there the night before. I looked at him and said, Ha! Yeah, right. That's obviously over the line, right? Right? You did say no, right? Nope, he did not. He didn't say no to the request that he spend the night with his ex-wife in the home they shared as a married couple. He thinks it is ridiculous for me to be angry about this and thinks I should just trust him. I don't think I want to be in a relationship with someone who cannot identify when they are crossing a line. I'm pretty sure I'm going to break up with him. Any thoughts? Advice? There's an important detail you mentioned but nobody seems to be noticing. You said they live five minutes away. Five minutes. Okay, then none of this is necessary at all. Your boyfriend could sleep in his own bed and still be at their place before they leave for vacation without breaking a sweat. Look, I could see the ex requesting that you don't stay at her house. That could be weird for her. You're not close with her. It's okay for her not to want you in her house. However, the sleeping there the night before departure is odd, and it should be obvious to your boyfriend that that is a fishy request. Plus, wouldn't it be better for the dog to stay at your boyfriend's instead of him sleeping over? Unless he lives in a pet-free place, I don't see a dire need for him to stay at her place. His agreement to sleep over the night before shows serious lack of respect for your relationship and judgment about boundaries with his ex. At the very least, even if the ex doesn't want you over at her house now, he should have made it clear that you're not going anywhere anytime soon, and should she want him to dog sit again in the future. They should make a plan for Fido to get acclimated at his place, so that you, his current significant other, 
won't be banned from his life every time she, his ex, goes to Cancun. Update. He's a great guy, and it would be a shame for this to cause our relationship to end. I talked to him briefly and tried several of the suggestions below. It has not resolved the fight yet, but I'll post to say how it ends. I tried to offer a reverse example by pointing out that I regularly dog and house sit for my ex and his wife. I almost always bring his dog to my house. The one time I stayed at their house, it was because the dog was a little under the weather and I felt like it would be hard on her to switch environments. He and his wife were so thankful to have someone around that they knew loved the dog, that they stocked the whole house with food and liquor and asked what kind of whiskey my boyfriend drank so he'd feel comfortable there too. I get that not all ex-relationships are like that, but to me, that is how a platonic friend asks for someone to house it. I feel like an ex should do something like what my ex did, go the extra mile to show that everything is cool. I told him that I would feel more comfortable if the dog stayed at his place, if it were possible. He lived with the dog for years, it has visited his house countless times. There is no prohibition on pets at his place, and he lives close enough to her home to go by every day and grab the mail or whatever. He said it would be inconvenient for the dog and will cause stress to his ex and her mom, so he is still going to stay over at her house. I told him that sleeping over at her house while she is there is an absolute deal breaker for me. He agreed that he would just drive over in the morning and said the reason he agreed to this request was because it was just too much trouble to argue with her. Ultimately, when we talk again, I am still leaning towards ending things with him because I still feel fundamentally uncomfortable about the following. 1. Her request that he stay the night with her prior to their departure is over the ducking top insane. 2. The fact that she expressly said that I am not welcome in the house seems like the sort of thing that, again, would not be part of a healthy platonic friendship. She did not say no strangers in the house. She said no me. 3. His ready acquiescence to these conditions has likely reinforced this behavior to her. This is literally a request she made in the course of 30 seconds. He immediately agreed. He hasn't given her any pushback at all, but I've been hurt about it for four days. As far as she knows, this is a perfectly reasonable thing for her to request of him whenever she goes on vacation next. 4. He seems to have considered everyone's comfort except for mine. Anyway, when we spoke he was heading to a work appointment and asked if we could talk again in an hour or so. So, I guess we will see. Conclusion No breakup, for now. We talked for a long time and I told him that I needed a day to think. But while we were talking, it really seemed like he's just a ducking lovable moron who doesn't see the crap his ex was trying to pull. He did tell her he wouldn't spend the night when she was in the house, duh, and he drove over at 4am to see them off. Otherwise, everything else is as she requested, but I see why it's the best thing for the dogs for him to stay there. I am sure as I could possibly be that he isn't doing anything sketchy. I think he just didn't realize that it was ducked up. I feel confident that I can get over it if this happens again and I have to dump his sorry butt, but I also feel pretty sure that it won't happen again. Most of all, he's a good guy and I really hope for the best and think it's worth waiting to see. He asked if I'd meet him for dinner tonight and I feel like I'd rather just go back to loving him and let it go this time. In the end, I think we worked out a compromise and know how to avoid this in the future. A little history to give context. I, 18 through to 20, dated a guy named Brian, 18 through to 20, for two years, almost eight years ago. We knew of each other in high school and in college we got together and it was an airtight relationship. We shared a lot of mutual friends and one friend, Chris, was the kind of kid that always had parties at his house, even when we were young. His mom, Tiffany, late 40s, early 50s, was the cool mom that would buy alcohol, teach 15 and 16 year olds how to do shots, and had that attitude of, it's better it's happening under my roof than a stranger's house. As we grew older, her behavior became more flirtatious with Chris's friends, and she would dress like a 21 year old instead of her own age. Imagine an obese Stifler's mom minus the sexiness. Eventually, this led to her and Chris's father divorcing. I don't know the full details, but apparently, according to Brian, Tiffany would pull him aside at parties and confide in him about the nature of the divorce, claiming her husband said he was embarrassed by her behavior. Tiffany seemed to fixate on Brian after the divorce, constantly asking him to talk to her privately, attempting to gift him with things, 
sending long-winded emails about her problems. Brian knew Chris's family since he was four, so her being personable wasn't too surprising at first. But the rate it escalated, and its nature became very uncomfortable. At one point, Brian and I went on vacation together, and she blew up his phone after she found out from a mutual friend. She called non-stop back to back, and Brian had to shut off his phone. It was a major what-the-duck moment for me, and Brian confided in me what she had been doing. She would grow upset when she would take his phone and saw him texting to me more than her. If she saw us doing PDA, she would start to cry. She attempted to spread rumors that I was stalking my boyfriend and was isolating him into an A relationship. We shared many mutual friends at that point, and we were that couple that were fine doing things apart and spending time with friends separately. Most of them knew what she was saying was BS, but the very few that didn't developed a bad opinion of me. I pointed out to Brian that this made me uncomfortable, not only because of her clear unhealthy mental well-being, but the fact that she was harassing him. If the genders were reversed, it would be seen as utterly creepy and the police would be called. Brian agreed, stating that it was hard because how entrenched their families were. It all came to head one day when many of our friends went to a bonfire party. Tiffany tagged along with her son. We were all having fun. Brian and I were cuddling together chatting with friends when a battery whizzed through the air and whacked me in the head. It wasn't a small battery either. It was a D battery that must have come from her flashlight. Brian immediately sprang to his feet, yelling, Who threw that? And everyone speechless pointed to Tiffany. She began to cry, yelling she was trying to get his attention all night, and Brian and her son laid into her. She stormed off and left leaving her son stranded. Chris wanted me to call the cops, but I was too embarrassed and just wanted to leave. I don't know why that woman had it out for me. I've always been cordial to her, despite her behavior. Everyone was utterly confused, even her own son. Looking back, I regret not reporting it. Brian and I broke up amicably a few months later, and we stayed friends for a few years till we drew apart, like many of our friends did. At that point, Brian was so disturbed by her behavior, he ended up telling his mom, and Tiffany was blacklisted from family events. He still maintained a friendship with Chris. Now to present time. I, 28, haven't thought about Tiffany or any of that in years. I am a successful, happily married woman, and I feel so lucky to be with my husband, 29. I found my best friend and love of my life. We live out of state and visit my family and old friends on occasion. I seldom have any contact from my old circle of friends from high school, college, except for perhaps four people. One of them is my friend Sarah, who is down to earth and an awesome person. One day, I get a call from Sarah, and we were catching up, when she let me know about an incident at a bar she and her husband went to last weekend. Apparently, she ran into Chris and his mom. Sarah wasn't fully aware of what happened before. They caught up and were having fun playing pool when Tiffany asked about me. Sarah told her how I was married and living out of state and how I sent her locally made candies, etc. for the holidays. Tiffany started talking about my relationship with my ex, Brian. She had a full-on rant about how she ducked my ex before, which was creepy since we began dating on his 18th birthday, so he would have been a minor. I got to, and how he was cheating on me with her throughout the course of our relationship. She said many other colorful things, much to the discomfort and awkwardness of the rest of the people around the pool table. Apparently, Chris walked away and sat at the bar to avoid the situation and apologized to Sarah and her husband when they left. I kind of laughed because, seriously, it's sad. What was there to be angry about, even if it was true? That happened eight years ago. Life goes on. Why would a woman who is almost 30 care about dead things from the past. Sarah apologized about telling, but she felt really uncomfortable with the conversation and that Tiffany seemed unhinged and fixated on me and Brian. She felt like she had to give me a heads up just in case. I wish that was it, but last night my husband received a message on Facebook from Tiffany. We are private people, so she had to do some digging to find out what my husband's last name is and finds us on Facebook. Somehow, she got his private email and sent him the same message to that too. It essentially read like she was thanking him for giving her the best night of her life, etc. It disturbs me she's going to such an effort to do this, and I have no clue how she is doing it. The last I remembered, she's not a tech-savvy lady. I am worried now she might try to contact his work. He's a salaried employee at an aerospace company, and annoyingly, there is a lot of inside politics that run it, 
so anything bad could reflect poorly on him with promotions, raises, and bonuses. My husband brushed it off and blocked her, but I worry that the crazy from my past will affect him in a negative way. What should I do to handle this? I feel lost in what the best solution should be. Why should she go to such lengths in the past and present to do such things? I feel so confused since we've only ever had brief interactions and they were pleasant. That is genuinely one of the weirdest things I've ever read. It's clear that she has an unhealthy obsession with you, and like you, I'm worried about what lengths she'll go to in order to hurt you. I think you might need to get some legal advice about where you stand about the email she sent to your husband. I have a five-year-old son with my ex. I would say we have a pretty good co-parenting relationship, and we both try to make things as easy for our son as possible. His fiance recently contacted me to tell me she was uncomfortable by how close we are and that she wanted me to make some changes going forward. Her changes include me moving. My ex and I co-own the house I currently live in, but my ex paid for everything. The house is very close to my ex's, which makes it easier for our son to go between our homes. She also doesn't like that my ex technically has his own space here, which he only uses when our son is sick. The second is, she wants us to stop taking trips of any kind with our son, and wants my family to stop hanging out with her future in-laws. At the moment, we usually take him somewhere fun for his birthday, and sometimes in the summer, but she wants us to put a complete stop to it. My family and his are very close, and they also sometimes take joint vacations, but they've been doing that since before I ever had a romantic relationship with my ex. She also has an issue with us having dinner together, and over the financial agreement we currently have. When I asked if she had spoken to my ex about it, she said she was coming to me as a woman because I would understand better than him how these things make her feel. I don't want her to feel uncomfortable, but I also don't want to ruin the setup we currently have as my son is happy with it. What can I do to make everyone happy? It is not your responsibility to make her happy. If she wants to set boundaries for your ex and your ex agrees, that's one thing but she has no standing to make a single demand of you. It sounds like you and your ex are doing a great job co-parenting. If she's smart, she'll appreciate that and not try to disrupt the peace. She's going to split the entire family apart. Her future in-laws have no idea what's coming. Your priority is your child and this woman will definitely not be a good step-parent. That's why you need to tell your ex right now. She's doing a divide and conquer routine and playing on your womanly feelings of understanding. You should remind her that you are a mother first and foremost. Tell him now.